Well, my first impressions of the Moto X4 were very positive, which just proves me one thing once again, they are very reliable. And in this video, I wanna let you know why I think this is such a good phone. And I would say, let's start off with the first thing, which is not even the design, but the actual build quality, which is amazing for this price point, because first of all, no creaking at all. It feels super solid, great hefty weight distribution and so on. The buttons, no wiggling at all, great tactile feedback, super placement and then already the next thing which is the oleophobic coating on the front because whenever I take this out of my pocket it's always clean and it's also super smooth just as the glass on the back that doesn't really feel hollow either and it actually is very grippy at least for me of course not for everyone but what is definitely grippy for everyone at least it should be is the side because those are super nicely and that's why this phone can be held very securely and absolutely with an amazing in and feel. It feels so comfortable, so round everywhere, because here there is a little bit of an edge, but it's not something rough. But on the back, we can see the nice curves here and everywhere, and it makes it feel just so comfortable. One and usability is quite okay, even though one thing is maybe not that great, it is the width. Because if you compare here with another 5.2 inch, you can see it is still, after all, noticeably wider compared to other 5.2 inches, which just comes along with the wider side bezels but other than that here we have on the back of course the motorola logo and the cam i think it looks stylish due to the kind of watch design but people might see it as different of course we have all the sensors in here like for example the leds and the cameras and so on i like it it does prosciutto that's for sure and that's why this phone will wiggle a little bit on the top we have a microphone sd card and sim card tray nothing on the left on the bottom headphone jack usb type c I've already talked about the buttons. There is supposed to be a notification LED, a few people say, but even though I actually see this option here, pulse notification light, when I press on that, it just shows me configure notifications and I have not seen anything light up. So I'm not quite sure what's that all about. Of course the cam here actually with a front flash as well and the mic, uh, the speaker on the top with another microphone here and the fingerprint reader, which works absolutely fine. I would like to have an option to turn off the vibration because this kind of makes it perceive like the actual unlock process um, needs a little bit longer, which is not the fastest one. It is quite fast in terms of just of the reaction because once the screen is on, as you can see, it is a fast fingerprint reader, but the screen turn on time is maybe not quite the fastest one. But other than that, no complaints at all. It feels great, high build quality, super amazing in-hand feel. And that's why I would say let's move on to the display, which I would actually like to call at least one of the best mid-range phones or displays, if not above. Because what we have, of course, is color mode standard and vibrant i would definitely leave it at vibrant because it's not anything oversaturated or something like that but no white balance control which is not needed the white on its own is maybe a little bit on the colder side for some people but i like it ever so slightly colder it's a very clean white also stable viewing angles and top colors i have to just give it to that the clarity and the quality of this display is absolutely top notch especially the great white point which is very clean with the clarity and the sharpness of this display is absolutely top notch maybe not the very best thing is though the maximum brightness at just 110 lux that could have been better especially due to the otherwise amazing qualities of this display that's maybe the only bummer for a few people the sunlight visibility what about the speaker Okay, so here's my one gripe about the speaker. If you have it like this, it's front facing, which is actually quite nice, but it's a little bit odd and unfamiliar on the top. But if I use it in landscape, then it's actually away from me. And usually phones with a bottom firing speaker would then reflect and sound actually better than this one. Now you might say you could just use it like this, but if I have my phone in the hand like this and I usually switch like this over, and then this feels just a little bit wrong and it could be louder. The actual quality though is absolutely fine. No complaints here at all. And since we have the headphone jack here, this one is also fine because it's good. Nothing more than that. And the speaker also. So this is just about good on both terms. Now, what about the performance? Let's kill all the apps. Yeah, that did not work. This is a little bit weird. So you have to scroll all the way down instead of the other way, which is most usually the case. And you see the brightness. I should have maybe set it up a little bit better. Now, and app launch times. As you can see, 
and, and if you if you wouldn't know or if I wouldn't know, I would have just assumed this is the Snapdragon 625. It's not really any faster, which maybe has something to do with other things like the RAM and also the storage, but it's also not really any smoother. So in terms of performance, you won't really gain much. Also not in terms of efficiency, but I'll get to that, which is definitely not a bad thing because after all, the Snapdragon 625 was my favorite SoC of the year. And this one is just about as good. So I, that's a good sign, but also a little bit sad to see because I would have wished for a little bit more improvement because on paper it should have been better, but it's not really. And especially one thing that I've noticed also on the Snapdragon 626, I'm not quite sure what it's about because this is my first 630 phone, that there is a little bit more lag than on the 625 phones. It's minimal, it's not a lot, and it doesn't really change anything because it's so minor, just as a quite subtle lag, but it's visible. Multitasking, of course, is okay, but this is the 3GB version, and that's why it's just okay, because you will actually feel the 3GB of RAM, because apps quite often have to reload. If you especially do some heavy multitasking, you will notice it. Maybe not so much in normal use, especially since it's a mid-ranger, it's fine, but I would definitely recommend you to get maybe the 4GB version, which also has double the amount of storage with 64, but also is more pricey. Now, games run just totally fine. You can play all the games absolutely on a moderate level, nice middling frame rates. And the good thing I just about that, this chip is still very efficient. So it won't really heat up and you can play for quite a long time. So I don't know really what else to say, but gaming performance is absolutely on a solid level. Now, let's get to the battery. A full charge takes about one and a half hours, which is totally fine. 10% for a one hour of YouTube is also above the average. Duty LCD screen, that's kind of the best what you can get. Only OLED improved ones or huge batteries can get better results. Now, battery life. On mobile data, I got about six, actually closer to maybe six and a half hours of screen on time and in use over a normal day. And on Wi-Fi, like nine hours, but even with potential to 10 hours, depending on your use and what you do. So this is a great plus level. Standby Rain was also one of the best, not the very best one, but very, very good. So here, everything is very solid. Now let's talk about the software. You can see the launcher here. This is pretty much stock Android, as you can see here also with the notifications. What else? We have a few extra things because this is not the Android One version. Here in Germany, we only have the motor version, which I think is the better one because we have motor key, which kind of makes you, gives you the option to unlock options, but also motor actions, display and motor voice. So motor display, you know that once you lift it up, the screen will turn on and you will see your notifications and you can kind of quickly act on them, which is something that I like really a lot, but it's a little bit finicky because if I just have it on my table, I don't know how many times it turns on when I don't want to, but because it's very sensitive, but yeah, that's not a real big issue because after all, the extra usability is better. Motor actions, of course, we have still, for, for example, three finger screenshot, one button navigation, because this is also one thing. If you turned it off, you would have just the regular navigation bar in case you want it, but with one navigation bar, one button navigation bar, you have one swipe to the left or right for back and the other way around for the multitasking. So that's one thing you can you can decide. Of course, we have chill, the chop for the flashlight, also the twist for the capture shrink screen is also still available in case you want to use it for one-handed use, stop ringing, flip to do not disturb and so on. So I'm extra... I'm very pleased with these extra options. I like the one navigation bar way better than, for example, on Huawei phones, but sometimes if you just want to swipe, you actually go to the home screen because you maybe didn't properly do this. But other than that, we have wireless on. What I said, unfortunately, wrong in my review is I said it has wireless charging. It does not have. I guess I kind of maybe saw wireless sound system and mistaken it or I've seen something wrong in the systems. <laughs> so let's just forget about that. Other than that... That's pretty much it. It's very stock like 7111. It maybe won't get the updates quite as fast as the Android One version, maybe not for quite as long, but I prefer it just because of the enhanced functionality that it has. But that's something you have to decide. Now, let's get to the camera. And what I want to do from now on is actually go into the software actually itself, which is in this case a little bit not that convenient because we have this option, which I showed already in my preview that if you, for example, have an item here, you could just scan that and it would tell you kind of what it is, what it will try right now. Let's actually see what it thinks this is. 
because usually it kind of gets what it is, but not anything you could really rely on or search for on Google. As you can see, it says a black game controller. I guess that's quite obvious, but it found an Xbox 360 controller, which it isn't, but still. But here's my issue with this software. We have all the normal functions here, as you can see here, to change the settings, which is okay. We have, of course, 4K 30 and Full HD 1060, but here's the little bit annoying part. If you wanna make an HDR, pick, no, HDR is actually good, totally fine, because we have auto on and off. But here's the thing, if you wanna use portrait mode, you get these kind of icons and you don't really even know what they mean unless you maybe have tried it beforehand. And then you have to press this and then you have the portrait mode. And if you want to get into a normal picture, you have to once again tap it and then get to the picture or maybe use the other modes. So I would have wished for a more convenient mode, especially for the portrait mode, which is something that a lot of people like to use. But other than that, it's fine. But one thing that I want to still show, if you shoot a picture, you can see actually not right now, but what it does quite obvious, quite long actually is saving the picture. As you can see, this is not the fastest saving mechanism, something I would have really liked to have seen in a different way but it it is what it is now let's get into the camera qualities though and those i have to say i like a lot because here you can already see the front facing cam from this distance it's a little bit too close to be properly in focus but already here it's absolutely fine see as you can see once again actually i really like the cam it's a very good front facing cam because a lot of details quite sharp okay sometimes white patterns as you can see here here a little bit colder here a little bit warmer is a little bit off but that's due to the lighting conditions but usually it's generally fine what we have though and i've said this already before we have a front facing led so a flash and with this as you can see results are already better especially if you are in low light conditions and you need that this is also one thing that gets quite obvious for the video Video, I would say is really good because it is a little bit shaky. I would wish for some stabilization, not that it's any more shaky than other phones because most don't have it, but it would have been nice to have this, but quality is absolutely fine. Now indoors, also just about as good with decent lighting. The microphone sounded a little bit dull, a little bit muffled, but otherwise it's fine. But here's the good thing about the front facing flash. If you go into, a, let's say a little bit darker area like you will see right now, you could still kind of quite nicely vlog in dark situations with the flash because once you see it turned off, of course, the quality will degrade, which I will do in just about a few seconds. As you can see here now, it's definitely way more grainy. So this is a good solution. And that's why I would say, let's get to the next one. A picture in the darkness without the flash and with definitely good picture. And overall, as you can see here, the low light capabilities are actually really good because not a lot of grain and still maintains quite a lot of details and sharpness. Like I said, it's only the saving because autofocus and shutter times are actually quite fast and good. As you can see here also indoors, quite a good picture here with the flash and here, for example, with the bokeh mode that doesn't work so well, at least not on figures like this. But yeah, outside, and I have to say, this is a very good camera. As you can see here, a lot of details Bokeh mode maybe works or this portrait mode works maybe better with people than with plants and anything else. But otherwise, pictures are sharp. Autofocus was very reliable. Good natural colors. Exposure was good. Also HDR, as you can see here, it definitely enhances the picture quite nicely. And I would actually leave auto HDR on all the time. I don't see why not. Because some of those pictures like this, for example, was just shot in auto mode. And it just looks nice. Absolutely sharp, detailed. So I'm very happy with that. Now 4K, there is a little bit of artifacting going on, but not anything really to be concerned about. Otherwise it's quite smooth. What I like a lot about 4K is the very kind of, okay, that's maybe not that great, but slow, but therefore very subtle and really decent and very nice autofocus. As you can see, there is a smooth transition, which is very nice. As you can see here, it does such a nice job. Also transition from light to dark, but it's the really nice, autofocus that works almost not unobtrusive because I like this way more than a faster autofocus that has this one pump or something like that. Now let's get into the next thing which would be 1080p 60. Here something is very off and you will see this because of course the quality isn't quite as sharp and the artifacting is still going on which is a little bit odd for 1080p 60 but here's the issue the autofocus. It sometimes, and you will see this, just doesn't work. It just doesn't. You have to kind of shake the cam for a moment and then it kind of knows what to do. And this is one thing you will see all the time. So they definitely have to fix this. 1080p, 60, autofocus, not reliable at all. It, as you can see, I have to always shake it. 
What works then better is 1080p 30 frames because it's just about as smooth and sharp, but the autofocus works just normal again here. And what I actually noticed is some sort of image stabilization. It's a very decent one, but as you can see here, this looks actually quite nicely stabilized. So there is some smaller stabilization going on, which is nice to see. And I would say, since we've covered now everything, let's make a quick summary for all those people who didn't watch the whole detailed part and start off with the build quality top notch. This is on a flagship level already, in my opinion, not just for the price. Design, very good, smooth, very comfortable and with a very premium in-hand feel, but a little bit wide for 5.2 inches. The fingerprint reader, very good, fast, reliable, but, and it also is multifunctional with the home button function and of course backend multi um, recent apps. Display most likely one of the best mid-range displays and even a little bit above because very clear, sharp, good quality, but not very bright. Speaker, good, but on the top front, which is a little bit unfamiliar and it could be also louder. Headphone jack, good, all fine. Performance, very good, but you can feel the three gigabytes and there is some minor lag present, which they could fix, but it's not anything you should really bother about. Battery, great plus. Software, very good. And it is a slightly enhanced, enhanced stock Android, but it's also slightly boring, which the Android version will even take up a notch. Front-facing cam, very good. And it has even the front-facing flash, which not a lot of phones have. Front-facing video cam, really good. Stabilization would have been nice though, but I can't blame it for that, not for this price. Low light cam, really good. Main cam, very good. And the video cam also very good, especially with the 4K that has a slow, but very nice and subtle autofocus. And the value is also good. Now, some extra notes. Finally, a mid-range motor that feels super premium. Multitasking could be better on the 3GB version and that's why I would recommend you to get the 4GB version, but of course it's more expensive even though it comes with double the amount of storage. Saving pics is noticeable, it, it's slower than on most other phones. The camera app could be a little bit more convenient in my opinion, a little bit faster to access things, but overall very good, well-balanced total package, which brings me to my conclusion. Now, I don't quite know the exact price because I've checked Amazon, it says $3.99. With, with the ads, it's about $3.30. But when I check it on my affiliate links and so on, it says me $2.99. So I'm not quite sure where it is. So let's say $3.50. And with the price maybe even falling down, the only competition I see right now of recent phones out there is the HTC U11, which I will review quite soon as well, because this will be quite a good fight in my opinion. But I would say $3.50. Value isn't bad, but there are so many actually kind of almost flagship level mid ranges, but of course, usually they are bigger. And I would say once the price goes closer to 300, absolutely a total go because I definitely prefer this a lot over something like the Moto G5 Plus. This feels so much more premium, the display's way better, and everything else is just a little bit better, and you don't really have to pay so much more for. So this is an absolute recommendation from my side, especially with the price maybe, maybe getting a little bit down, but maybe get the four gigabyte version if it doesn't cost too much. The thing is just, you don't get many 5.2 inch phones, especially not for someone who wants, especially on the maybe Android One version, a lot of updates for a long time, and stock Android. So a very clean, bloat-free experience, which should be also quite good for a long period of time. So other than that, I can't really say anything. I can't fault it for really much. It's a very nice, solid overall package, and especially the high quality standard on a not even really mid-range phone because mid-range by now is like 500 when we have phones at 1000. So, yep, that's it. I hope it was helpful. I hope, I hope it was helpful. And if it was, maybe a thumbs up. Other than that, questions down there below and a good day. Bye.